You've all probably heard of video content known as deepfakes. Those videos where a real person's appearance has been digitally altered to make them look like somebody else, most often a popular public figure. And if you take that at base value, you see what I did there? They can seem kind of gimmicky. Good for a chuckle as you scroll down your endless social media feeds, although maybe you are seeing more of them these days. In fact, there's an uncrowned king of deepfakes right now. I bet you know who that is, right? Tom Cruise. But it's also not Tom Cruise. You're actually looking at this guy, Miles Fisher, a Tom Cruise impersonator who's the flesh and blood model for many super realistic Tom Cruise fakes. Now let's say one more thing about Deepfake Tom. As far as we know, the real Tom Cruise has never given anyone his permission to make these videos. And as far as we know, there's very little he can do to stop it. And that's why Deepfake Tom isn't just fun and games. It's a clear warning about what generative AI can do, where this technology is headed next, and how it could fundamentally change how most of us live our lives. Impressive as this technology is now, it's still in its infancy. But in the foreseeable future, AI, AI could create entirely digital versions of celebrities or other public figures completely from scratch, without the use of what you might call a source human at all. I call these people digitally created performers, or DCPs. There's two questions that we need to ask about this. First, can a DCP be so realistic that the person on screen, we can't tell the person on screen, isn't actually real? And the second, more important question is not whether or not we can do this, but whether we should. For the first question, at least, we already have our answer. The beloved actor, Peter Cushing, is sadly deceased, but both his likeness and his performance were digitally recreated for his small but important role in Star Wars, Rogue One. More recently, the very much alive Harrison Ford, who's now 81, was made to look about 35 again for the most recent Her uh, Indiana Jones. And not just for a shot or two, but for an extended and elaborate action sequence. Now, that, that sequence was incredibly expensive. It took 100 digital artists three years to make Harrison Ford look like the young man again. But these digital tools will quickly get better. And more importantly, they'll get cheaper. It's only a matter of time before DCPs are cost effective enough for use in all kinds of video content. Eventually, they'll become the norm. In fact, they'll become so common, we might stop noticing them at all. And that, unfortunately, is the answer to the second question that I asked a moment ago, whether or not we should continue developing DCPs. Now certainly, we should have well-established rules about tagging or indicating deep fakes as fake, but this technology is racing ahead far faster than our ability to regulate it. And that's the fundamental change in how we'll soon be living our lives that we need to think about right now while we still have a chance to influence that change before it takes place. Because all over the developed world, people live on and through their screens. We all watch effectively infinite amounts of video content from countless sources. And this content deeply influences how we experience and understand the world. But deep fakes are rapidly making their way onto our screen. And the more advanced this technology becomes, more realistic they'll seem. 
we're about to cross what's known as the uncanny valley, which is a tech world concept describing how humans react negatively to simulations of other humans. Well, we might not be able to tell a difference for much longer. But what's keeping this kind of AI back right now is mainly the lack of cooperation from influential celebrities. Scarlett Johansson recently had to sue an app developer for using her digital likeness without her permission. And Tom Hanks had to make a statement disavowing his deep faked promotion of a dental plan. But what if the dawn of the DCP bypasses famous people entirely? It'll start by replacing relatively unknown actors in TV commercials or other informative video content where nuanced emotional expression, you know, the thing that makes us human, isn't always needed. In fact, this change has already begun. In this Japanese TV commercial for green tea, the person on screen is a DCP, not an actual human, and we might not have noticed the difference if it hadn't been pointed out. Now this will snowball as content producers reap the financial benefits of not hiring actors or other human-focused jobs for video production. People like costume designers, makeup artists, caterers, even drivers. Quite possibly the entire human crew. And forget about putting actors in front of green screens for CGI backdrops. Soon, we won't need the actors at all. DCPs are already replacing background actors, as we see in crowd scenes, as we see here in the hit TV show, Ted Lasso. So it's actors without fame or influence that DCPs will replace first. But as I said a moment ago, what's really keeping this from taking off is resistance from influential celebrities. That resistance will fade. Sooner or later, some A-lister, or maybe just a B-plus lister, will go ahead and agree to license not just their physical appearance, but their entire persona and performance as their own DCP. In Hollywood money talks, it'll just take a big enough offer from a studio or a content producer for some big name to take the plunge. And then they all will. And why not? Why not have your DCP star in several movies at the same time while you relax at home? The estates of deceased celebrities have even more to gain as DCPs enable long dead actors to appear an entirely new content, quite possibly starring in movies and TV alongside still living actors. And even I think a buddy movie starring a digital Jack Lemmon and a real Ryan Gosling does sound pretty entertaining. So this change to what we see on our screens is coming, whether we want it to or not. My final question is, how will this affect the way we live in the future? We're racing towards a world in which we might not know if anything we see on any screen is real. And to be honest, many people might not even care. This is where deep fakes jump the shark, as we say in the TV biz, and create problems extending far beyond entertainment or advertising. We know we're already living in the age of fake news. In the developed world, we inhabit so-called information silos in which content from various sources reinforces things that we already believe. But that makes us susceptible to false information 
especially if it fits into the narrative of those beliefs. So remember Deepfake Tom. A little creepy, but also kind of funny. Well, what's not so funny is a deepfaked politician declaring an election result is invalid, followed by deepfakes of trusted news anchors reporting that story as true, then followed by legions of DCPs on our screens repeating that story over and over and over. And while this talk has been mostly about celebrities and public figures, this same technology will soon be able to deepfake the rest of us, people we know, our friends and family. It sounds like science fiction, but the technology already exists. And we only have to fall for it once to doubt everything that we see on a screen. There's a phrase for this, coined by professors Robert Chesney and Danielle Citron in their 2018 paper about deepfakes. They call this effect the liar's dividend. And in a nutshell, the liar's dividend means that making us disbelieve, making us believe one untrue thing can make us believe that everything else is untrue as well. That's the big idea at stake. The very nature of truth. Already beleaguered, already divisive and debatable. When DCPs replace actual people on our screens, and the line between reality and AI is blurred, and we can't tell the difference, and we just accept it all as normal, we may never make it back to the idea of truth ever again. Thank you.